How many comes to just receive God's love? Because nobody is greater than his name. There's nobody in the world that's greater than God. Amen. So just sing this song wherever you are, if you're in your living room or whatever. Just, just go with me. It says, listen. As we love. Strength, strength is greater than ours. No one. 
Redeeming love, I want you to know how vitally important it is for you to continue to be diligent in your giving. I'm so excited about all that God is doing, all of those who are connected to our ministry. I want you to know the word is still going forth and lives are still being changed. And I want you to know at this time, it's so important for all of us to make sure that we are sowing, to make sure that we are tithing and doing the work of the Lord. Uh, the three ways to give, you already have those. Of course, you can go to our website. Of course, you can cash out and you can text to give. I want you to know that you are sowing into good ground. Take this time right now to take a moment and pray about what you should sow into this ministry. Give with the right spirit. If you know the Lord is good, just begin to put some, some likes and some some hearts on the screen and just just type the Lord is good if you would do that for me hey, hey. it's a simple song it just said that God is good it says, and we gonna say oh it ain't nothing you else it ain't nothing else
chapter 43 and we're going to read verses 18 and 19 Isaiah chapter 43 verses 18 and 19 you'll find these words this is the King James Version remember ye not the former things neither consider the things of old behold I will do a new thing. And rivers in the desert. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, look, Pay attention. I will do a new thing. Just for a subject for today, I want to speak for a few moments from the subject, don't miss your moment. Don't miss your moment. I know many of you are wondering why are we down this praise team was on the floor in the pews, and why am I down preaching from the floor and from the pews? It's because I believe oftentimes uh, there's so many sermons that happen in the pulpit, but they never really make it outside of the pulpit. They never make it into the pew, but this is the place where many of our congregants come and where they are, and every once in a while, it's important for a pastor, for a leader to take a moment to stop and to look at life from another lens. Every once in a while, you can't just look at life from your lens, uh, but sometimes you gotta stop and look from a different lens, and today, I need to look at this text from the lens of a congregant. I need to look at this text from the lens of someone who is learning scripture, from the, the lens of someone who has come to a place to say, Lord, I don't know, everything theologically. I don't know every scripture. I don't always know when to stand and when to sit. I don't know everything about church. I don't know everything about church history, but I know I want to know you more. Have you ever got to that place in your life where you just had to say, Lord, I don't know everything, but what I do know is I need you like never before. I need you. Uh, when I wake up in the morning, I need you uh, to help me figure out what to do with my children. I need you like never before. Have you ever felt so frustrated and distracted by the issues of life that you felt like there were moments in your life where you missed a God moment because you were frustrated with your life? I want to talk to somebody today that's ever been in a place where you felt like you were trying to do the right thing. You were trying to go the right way. You were trying to do it God's way, but you look, it looks like you still missed a moment. You ever had one of those moments? And, and, and maybe let's look at it this way. Let's take it off of you and me for a moment. But I love music. And so I love listening to music. I love streaming music. I love buying music. Uh, but have you ever heard of what we call a one-hit wonder? 
Have you ever heard of a one-hit wonder? A one-hit wonder is a person uh, who comes out with a CD or an album and it's wonderful and they get a whole lot of plays, they get a whole lot of streams, they get all of that and then a year from now we look back and say whatever happened to them? You ever heard of a one-hit wonder? It's somebody, uh, it's when an artist thinks more of themselves than they should and because they're holding on to memories and achievements of their past, they no longer become relevant. Uh, and I believe that many of us have what I like to call a one-hit wonder complex because there are areas in our lives from our past where we did real good. There were areas in our lives where we did the right thing. We chose to do the right thing. We made the right sacrifices. But the question is, what have you done lately? Many of us are so focused on what we've done in the past that we are missing moments right now. Have you missed your moment? Have you ever felt like you missed out on a great opportunity? Have you ever felt like you missed out on a relationship that you thought would have been great for you? Have you ever felt like you missed out on a good career move? What do you do when you miss your moment? I believe that each of us have to do an inventory on our lives to figure out what is still relevant or are we uh, in a place where we are still celebrating victories that no longer matter? Each of us have to do an inventory on our lives. Uh, when is the last time you've done an inventory on the relationships in your lives? Are they still relevant? Uh, many of us are losing valuable time in the name of loyalty. Are you loyal to people who are no longer loyal to you? Are you finding yourself doing everything you can uh, to build and to keep relationships that no longer fit who you are today? Can I tell you something? Don't you ever let anyone take away from you your right to grow, your right to evolve, your right to adapt. Don't give them that much power. You see, uh, many of us have given our jobs too much power, our friendships too much power, our habits too much power, even our conversations have too much power. And I know what I said yesterday, I know what I committed to yesterday, but I've grown since then. And I realize that what was good for me last year may not be good for me anymore. I know that they might think of you as being uh, fake. They might think of you as being sometimey or phony. But let me tell you something. People who are growing and people who are evolving and people who are changing are often misunderstood as being phony. But I want to suggest to you that you got to get to a place in your life where you stop worrying about what other people think about you. You have a right and a responsibility to keep growing in God. Whatever you do, don't miss your moment. And so we find ourselves here in this text. Uh, this is Isaiah talking to the children of Israel. He's talking to them and he's he's trying to encourage them he's speaking on behalf of God and he says something that strikes us strange he says remember ye not the former things neither consider the things of old I thought that's strange because just before this Isaiah kept reminding them of how uh, God led them through uh, the wilderness and how he allowed them to go through the Red Sea. He parted, God parted the Red Sea for them. They were able to walk through on dry ground, but then he says, but don't remember that. That's an old blessing. He reminds them of how that same Red Sea, uh, 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 the, the Egyptians came and they went and tried to go through that same Red Sea and God used the Red Sea uh, to drown out and kill uh, the Egyptians so that they wouldn't have to worry about them anymore. He reminds them, he brings it up, but then he says, but don't remember that. That's old. That's an old blessing. That's a blessing that's no longer relevant to you. And here is my first point that I want to make today. Don't let memories of old distract you from your next moment. 
Many of us are in a place where we are still celebrating off of victories that no longer matter. We're celebrating off of the one thing you did right, not realizing that you did everything wrong after that. Many of us are trying to celebrate things that are no longer relevant, but you got to get to a place where you said, I know what God did for me then, but God is not through with me yet. God is still healing me. God is still developing me. God is still lifting me up. And because God is not through, I believe that I got to open my eyes so that I can see, Lord, what's next for me? When is the last time in your prayer life you said, Lord, what's next? What is my next assignment? What should be my next goal? What do you have for me next? Lord, what are you going to do with me this time? Many of us are so focused on yesterday that we are losing out on opportunities today. You see, only a fool will drive forward while looking in the rear, rear view mirror the whole time. Uh, but you got to get to a place where you focus in the area where you're trying to go. It's hard to move forward when you've been consumed with looking backwards. And many of us are in a place where we can't move forward in our relationships. We can't move forward on our jobs. We can't move forward in everything else that we're trying to do because we have been focused on yesterday. Yesterday is gone and it's never coming back. But you got to get to a place where you can say, Lord, what do you have for me today? This text is tailored to teach us a few things. One of the things that you got to uh, look at is the fact that, remember, Isaiah uh, brings up, he references the children of Israel's journey as they uh, journeyed through the Red Sea. And God allowed them to get there uh, uh, without uh, dying in the Red Sea, without drowning like their enemies did. He reminds them of that, but remember, he says, uh, but don't remember that. It was almost as if he was saying, I know that's what God did, but your expectation of God cannot be based upon what he did yesterday. God says, I got something greater in store for you right now. Yesterday's blessing is no longer relevant. You're not even in the same place that you were anymore. What does it look like for you to keep praying and saying, Lord, I know you did it before. I want you to do it again. And he's saying, why would I do it again when I have something greater? I have something new in store for you how crazy would it be for the children of Israel to be praying for another parting of the Red Sea when they don't even have any enemies anymore how crazy would it be for them to be praying, saying, Lord, I saw you uh, bring us through the land. I, I, I need an escape plan. Uh, but, but God is saying, what are you escaping from? I already killed the enemies of your past. And what I'm trying to get you to understand is many of you, uh, uh, you're tying God's hands because you're only asking him to do what he's already done. And since he already did it, you're already freed from it. Now it's time for you to do something new. God says, I want to do something new for you, but I can't because you're still stuck in yesterday. Don't miss your moment. You see, last season for the children of Israel, they had to break away from the Egyptians. But in this season, here in the text, it was time for them to build. Last season, uh, they needed an escape plan, but this was the season where God said, now it's time for me to establish you. And can I stop right there to let somebody know last season, for you, you had to find an escape plan. You, need to, you needed to find a way out. You needed to find a way out of your situation, but God says, not this season. This season, I want to do something new. I want to establish you. I want to build in you. I want you to grow in this season. And who am I talking to in here that will give God a praise? Because this is the season where God says, this time I'm not taking anything away. This time I'm adding to you. It's time for you to increase. It's time for you to promote, to, to get a promotion. It's time for you to grow in every area of your, la of your life because last, the last chapter of your life, you had to run for your life. But this is the chapter where God says you're not running for your life. You're about to run into a new life. You need to understand that new life is available to you. New possibilities are available to you. New careers are available to you. New relationships are available to you. New strategies are available to you. New networks are available to you. New hobbies 
are available to you. New conversations are available to you. I'm going to hit your street in a minute. New conversations, new mindsets, a new house. Can I tell you, while I was praying, the Lord told me to tell somebody he's about to change your address. I don't know who it is that's streaming today, but I want you to know a new house is even available to you. New investments are available to you. New money is available to you. New streams of income is available to you. So he says in his word, behold, I will do a new thing. If you pay attention, if you behold, God says if you would just look at me, you could see I'm not trying to do what I did yesterday. If you would just look at me, you would see I'm not trying to do a repeat of what I did for you last year. If you would just focus your attention and pay attention, you would see I'm trying to do something new for you. And I want to suggest to somebody that maybe some of the shaking that's taking place in your life is God trying to say, if I could just get your attention, I'm trying to get you to focus on what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do something new for you. I wish somebody would just shout out, God's about to do a new thing. God is about to do a new thing. You might want to comment that today. Uh, encourage yourself. Encourage somebody and say, God is not through with me. God is about to do something new for me. Behold, I will do a new thing. He says, behold, focus, look, pay attention. I'm trying to do something new and I'm trying to do it through you. The second thing that I want you to do so that you won't miss your next moment in God is I need you to refocus. And when you refocus, you're going to have to ask yourself, have I been looking at the wrong stuff? Uh, when is the last time you examined your focus? When is the last time that you had examined what you think about all day long? When is the last time that you examined your thought process? Here is the question. Have you been looking at the wrong thing? Some of us have been worried because we're looking at the wrong thing. Some of us have been frustrated. We've grown frustrated because we're looking at the wrong thing. Some of us are confused, but it's because we're looking at the wrong thing. Some of us are exhausted and we don't know what to do with ourselves and with our lives and with our relationships and with our jobs. And it's all because we've been focused on the wrong thing. Ask yourself, have I been looking at the wrong thing? Shift your focus from what God has done to what he's doing right now. God is not through with you. God is not finished with you. He's still working on your behalf. Can I tell you something? I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what you've been in. I don't care what you've struggled with. If you are still alive, it means God is not through with you. Every once in a while when I get frustrated uh, with life, I remind myself, if I'm not dead, then God is not done. And you might need that reminder today to say, you know what? If I'm still alive, it means I got another chance. If I'm still alive, it means there's still purpose left inside to me. If I'm still alive, it means that God has something that he wants to get done out of me. And I wonder, is there somebody that will give God a praise because you know you've been in some situations where you could have lost your life. You've been in situations where you could have lost it all. But God says, I still have something for you to do. I still have a work for you to do. I still have a calling over your life. If you are not dead, God is not done. Text says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Here is the concern that I had here in the text. Isaiah is talking to the children of Israel. He's speaking as the very mouthpiece of God. Uh, but Isaiah 
uh, he says, behold, I will, which is future tense, do a new thing. And then he says, now, which is present tense, it shall spring forth. I will do a new thing, future tense. Now, present tense, it shall spring forth. What I'm trying to get you to understand is for some reason or another, God starts speaking in the present tense and the future tense at the same time. And I got concerned. I got frustrated. I got, I was trying to figure that thing out until God says, don't put your limitations on me. I'm everywhere all at the same time. I'm Alpha and Omega. I'm right there with you in the midst of your struggle, but I'm already over there in the future with your solution. I need you to understand that many of us have missed moments because we have put our limitations on our expectation. We put our limitations on God and God is saying, don't put your limitations on me. I'm not bound by time. Don't put your limitations on me. I'm not bound by the very thing that you think you're bound by. Don't put your limitations on me because I'm already in your future even though I'm talking to you in your present right now. And is there somebody that can say, I thank God that he's everywhere all at the same time. I thank God that he's Alpha and Omega. I thank God that he's Genesis and Revelation at the same time. I thank God that he's at the beginning the middle and the end at the same time. Let me tell you why you ought to be excited about that. That means if God is already in your future, it means you don't have to worry because God is already there. And I wonder, is there somebody that's been anxious trying to figure out the outcome of certain situations? You've been anxious and not been able to sleep at night. But I want to give you a reminder and let you know God is already there. You ought to be excited about the fact that God is in your future. You ought to be excited about the fact that God is already in your next year. You ought to be excited about the fact that God is already working out what you're trying to figure out right now. It's already done because God is already there. He says, behold, I will do a new thing now it shall spring forth. First, he spoke it, but then he said, now you're about to see it. Isaiah is being used of God, and what happens is he speaks it, and then immediately he says, now you're about to see it. Can I tell you that this is what I need every believer who is streaming and who is watching right now. You are not designed to just miss moments. You are not designed to let moments fall in your lap. But you want to be like Isaiah. You were designed to create moments. And I'm talking to somebody in here that's been waiting on a blessing to hit you. Waiting on a blessing to fall in your lap. Waiting on a blessing to come out of the blue somewhere and fall in your lap. But God says your next blessing is not going to fall in your lap. It's going to flow out of your mouth. You got power to speak your way into your future. You have power to decree a thing and it shall be established. Do you know that there is power in your mouth? And I think this is a good time to just stop and say, Lord, since I know that you've given me the ability to create moments, I ought to create one right now. I don't know what what you need in your life. I don't know what you've been praying for, but this is the moment right now where you need to stand in faith and say, I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. You got to be able to stand in faith and say, no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. I feel the Holy Ghost. You ought to be able to stand and say, I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. Don't look at what it looks like right now. You have the ability to start speaking yourself into healing. Speak yourself into your next job. Speak yourself into your next uh, car. Speak yourself into your next career move. Is there anybody that will say, Lord, it's time for me to create a moment and stop waiting on one to fall in my lap. You need to know that there is power in your tongue. What are you talking about lately? Speak yourself into that thing. Take a moment 
And I don't know what you need from God, but I believe this is a good place right here uh, that we need to go ahead and just begin to thank God that even though we spoke it now, we're about to see it spring forth. I wonder, is there somebody in here that will give God a praise and say, Lord, I thank you for the power that you've placed on the inside of me. I'm about to speak my children saved. I'm going to speak it until I see my children saved. I'm going to speak it until I see money in my pocket. And I wonder, is there somebody here that will give God a praise because you got the power to speak your way into a new house. Speak your way into a new mindset. Speak your way into prosperity. Speak your way into healing. And is there somebody in here that will give God a praise and say, Lord, I thank you right now. Not for the money that's in my pocket, but for the money that's on the way. I thank you right now. Not for what's in my bank account, but I thank you that there's money on the way. I don't always preach about money, but I feel it in my spirit. And I speak to somebody that's streaming today. And I just want you to say there are streams of income that are coming to me. New opportunities are coming to me. There's a new way of living that's available to me. I wonder is, is there somebody here that will give God a praise and say, Lord, I thank you because I'm not going to miss another moment. I thank you because it's my season to create a moment. It's my season to walk into what I've been talking about. It's my season to actualize my dreams. I've been dreaming about it. I've been thinking about it. I've been praying about it. But now I'm about to see it. Is there somebody here that will give God a praise and say, Lord, I thank you for every mountain is about to be removed and say, Lord, I thank you because everything that's been in my way, I got the power to speak about it and it's going to move out my way. And is there somebody here that will say, move mountain, move out of my way, move this pandemic, move it out of my way. I say move depression, move it out of my way. Move anxiety, move out of my way. I don't know why. I don't know what your mountain is, but I'm here to declare to you today, it ain't going nowhere until you learn how to speak to it. You can't ignore it anymore, but just begin to speak to that thing and say, move out of my way. Move out of my way. Move out of my way. Somebody's gonna get that in your spirit. Move out of my way. Because greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world. I need to know is there, is there somebody in here today that can say, I'm not missing another moment. I'm not missing another opportunity. I'm not missing anything else. But I want everything that God has in store for me. But you got to know that the key to your next blessing is you got to unlock it with your mouth. You got power to speak and say, I move strife out of my family. You got power to speak and say, I move those issues out of my family. You got power to speak to it. Speak to your situation. Speak to your wayward child. Speak to stubbornness. And say, move. Move out of my way. The Bible says, resist the devil. And he's got to flee. And I wonder. 
I wonder, is there somebody that will stand flat-footed and say to yourself that I refuse to miss another opportunity. I refuse to miss another blessing. I refuse to be focused on yesterday. But I believe there's something right now and it's in my reach and it's in my hand. And I I've got the opportunity to say, Lord, I'm going to speak to my mountains. Lord, I'm going to speak to my situations. Lord, I'm going to speak to every challenge. Lord, I'm going to speak to every opposition. And say, Lord, I declare right now that this is my moment. This is my opportunity to say, move out of my way. Move out of my way. I want what God has for me. Move out of my way. I need every miracle I, I need it right now And I need to know Is there somebody That's desperate enough to say Lord I need every blessing With my name on it I need every miracle With my name on it Move right now God I'm done preaching now And I pray for every person that's been struggling with setbacks that's been struggling with mountains that seem to be insurmountable but I come right now as the man of God to speak and rebuke every opposition I rebuke every tactic of the enemy I stand against every assignment of the enemy I steal the hand of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus you will not miss another moment you will not miss another season you will not miss another opportunity because God is already on the case and everything yesterday distract you from what God is trying to do today this is your moment pray for each and every one of you I want you to know God is not through with you that God something greater in store for you. But you can't get it if you remain focused on yesterday. Many have become one hit wonders because you're still celebrating what God did through you a year or two ago lost your relevance because you're so busy focused on last year, last week, last month. God says if you would just pay attention, I'm trying to do something new through you right now. so many of you, I decided to come down here where you would normally be. I want you to know this is a season where the word has got to reach further than the pulpit. It's got to go far beyond the pew. But the word of the Lord has got to penetrate your heart. That is where change takes place. It's in your heart. 
There may be someone who needs to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. So we take this moment to invite you and to introduce you to a great Savior. You can repeat after me. We're going to pray a prayer of repentance. And then we're going to acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ and ask him to enter into our hearts and into our minds. Enter into our decisions so that we can make necessary changes and begin to grow in him. Let's pray. Confirm your spirit in each and every one of them. Lord, today we needed to hear this from you, Lord. That you are trying to create something new in us. But we need to focus. Help us, Father, to look to you as the author finishing of our faith. We look to you. Now, Father, there's someone who's streaming today. The truth is they need to establish a relationship with you. I'm asking you, Father, to confirm right now. Help them to understand we're talking directly to them. So, Lord, save them, heal them. For those who were once saved but they walked away, Father, help them to know that you welcome them back with open arms. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Thank God and all of God's people said amen. I want to those of you who are accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I want you to repeat after me. Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me for all of my sin. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again on the third day. I believe you're living today. Change me, transform me. From this day forward, I am saved. If you prayed that prayer, my brother, my sister, you are saved. We welcome you to the body of Christ. Life gets better from here. And all it took was a word from the Lord. God bless you. You still have an opportunity to sow if you have not already. We ask that you would continue to prepare your tithes and your offering. We hope that you were able to receive something from today's worship experience. We want you to know God loves you and we love you. Once again, thank you for coming and joining Redeeming Love Churches streaming experience today. Be encouraged and don't miss your moment. God is not through with you yet. We'll see you Wednesday for Bible.